Yesterday, we discussed who the Islanders' MVP should be. Today, we'll talk about the most disappointing player of 2023-2024. We've got that, plus the Islanders' draft pick is finalized. All that coming up on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Your Locked On Islanders, your daily podcast on the New York Islanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, everybody, to the Thursday edition of the Locked On Islanders podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I want to thank everyone who makes Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so you can get new episodes as soon as they drop. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 with any winning $5 bet. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. We have got a lot to discuss on today's show. But first, if there's something Islanders related on your mind, if you have a question, a comment, maybe a topic you'd like us to discuss on a future episode, Send us an email, the email address, LockedOnIslanders at gmail.com. And if you leave your first name, where you're from, we're happy to mention you on the show when we talk about whatever it is that's on your mind. You can also follow the show on X at LockedOnIsles. And you can follow me, Gil Martin, on X at IceWords, N-Y-R-V-S-N-Y-I. We'll keep you up to date on all things Islanders all year long, including the offseason full of trade rumors, hirings, firings, the draft, uh, and anything else that's uh, happening with the New York Islanders. And it's really great to talk a little Islanders hockey with you, game time or any time. So, you know, yesterday we did talk about the Islanders' most valuable player for last season. And, you know, I gave four people uh, on our YouTube page you could vote for or you could write in. And I really discussed six different players who could be, uh, in my mind at least, considered for MVP. Now, one person actually uh, so far commented and said, yeah, Patrick Waugh is the MVP. Yeah, I, I, I think you can make that case. But I was kind of focusing on players with this vote. We'll talk more about Waugh. Uh, throughout the off season. So, you know, as of right now, and it has only been one day, but uh, as of right now, the overwhelming winner so far, and we've had almost 300 votes in less than 24 hours, but it looks like Matthew Barzal is, as of now, ahead 50% of the vote. Noah Dobson, Bo Horvat, then Brock Nelson, a few write-ins for Semyon Varlamov and Kyle Palmieri, but that's where we stand as of now. And again, uh, voting, I'll keep voting open through the weekend, and then uh, next week I will announce uh, who your choice was for Islanders MVP. But just as much as you have a player who was uh, the MVP I'm not going to say the least valuable player, but the, the most disappointing player, the player who uh, you came in either with high expectations or you felt like you needed more from this player and they just didn't deliver. And there could be any number of reasons from, uh, you know, change of position, injuries, uh, all kinds of factors. It, it doesn't necessarily have to be the player's fault. And, you know, in my mind, for example, and and I'm going to talk about five players who, to me, could be considered for the most disappointing. And again, uh, most disappointing doesn't necessarily have to be worst player. And it's a combination of what you expected out of the player and then what you got from the player. So, You know, Hudson Fashing, for example, playing a little more than half the games, getting four goals and 14 points. I don't think he, you know, I don't think a lot more was expected of him under the circumstances. So I don't think he necessarily qualifies as most disappointing. 
uh, even though he did not have a spectacular season. But uh, again, uh, it's a combination of performance and how it, you know, meets up with expectations. So the first of the five players that I wanted to discuss, and to me, this is a, a perfect example of a guy who I personally would not choose as the most disappointing, but I think he has to be at least discussed on the list. And that's Scott Mayfield. And, you know, Mayfield played exactly half the Islanders games, had no goals, five assists, was a minus seven, 35 penalty minutes. But again, we found out after the season that Mayfield was playing with a a, a fractured ankle, which he suffered in game one of the season and that essentially he toughed things out for the good of the team. Now, was uh, did we see the Scott Mayfield we're used to seeing when he's playing his best hockey this year? No. Clearly he had difficulty clearing his own zone way more than he had in the past. His skating was not up to par, and that left him a little bit out of position. But, you know, more often than than normal. But again, the guy is playing on a broken ankle and toughing it out for the team. So while I think, you know, this season was a disappointment for Mayfield, I don't blame him. In fact, I give the guy credit for trying to play, for, you know, going to, to, to give his all even though it was obviously he was in pain and he wasn't able to play his game. And, you know, since fans over the course of the season uh, did not know that he was playing on a broken ankle, the fact that, you know, they were getting on his case and, and criticizing him had to be really difficult for, uh, you know, for Mayfield to take over the course of the year. So, Yes, it was a disappointing season for Scott Mayfield. I think if you were to ask him, he would say he wasn't thrilled with his performance. But at the same time, uh, I don't think it was necessarily his fault. And I credit him for the effort that he gave to try to help the team. Now, I'm going to list five players. These are not in any order. Okay. And we're not going to put up a poll, but. Uh, for this on YouTube, but on YouTube or via email, you can comment, you can send uh, an email and and tell me who you think deserves to be the the biggest disappointment of this season. And and it could be any one of the five players I mentioned, or you could pick a different player. And we're going to stick to players here. We're not going to go coaches and and don't vote for Lou. That's a whole different issue. Okay. Uh, The second person I'm going to nominate is Anders Lee. And why, you know, yeah, Lee played well in the playoffs. Not going to, you know, dispute that. But over the course of the season, Anders Lee only missed one game. He played in 81 games, 20 goals, 37 points. He was a plus two, had 68 penalty minutes, and that included a lot of, you know, those lazy penalties that we really don't like to see from the team, the lack of speed that Anders Lee has, it's always been an issue, but now as he's getting older, it's becoming more of an issue. And I think that Lee is on this list because he didn't maximize his opportunities. And Lee had chances during the season to be on that top line with Bo Horvat and Matthew Barzal, and he just couldn't fit in that line. Kind of ended up on the third line by the time everything settled, and that's probably, you know, third or fourth line is probably where Anders Lee belongs if he's back with the Islanders next season. And, you know, Lee stuck up for his teammates at times, late in the season especially, and in the playoffs. Uh, But, you know, getting 20 goals, and 37 points from a guy making $7 million a year. That's not good value on your return. And I I think at this point, you know, Anders Lee is clearly slowing down. And I think expectations probably going to be a little bit lower each year that he plays. 
but that $7 million salary remains. And, and to me, it remains a problem. So Lee was supposed to be top six. He ended the season on the third line, did not take advantage of his opportunities. And that's why I think he's a candidate for the team's most disappointing player. We have got more to get to on today's show. We will have uh, another couple of nominees for most disappointing player, plus for our Islanders birthday of the day. Uh, a longtime Islander who was with the team even up till this season. He's a forward. He's going to be a free agent. Let's see if you can guess who that is. I think this is a pretty easy one. We've got that and more coming up on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Indeed. There is no I in team, but there is one in Indeed, and that's the hiring platform you need to build yours. When you're hiring, you need Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Instead of spending hours on multiple job sites searching for candidates with the right skills, Indeed is a, a powerful hiring platform that can help you do it all. With Instant Match, over 80% of employers get quality candidates whose resume on Indeed matches their job description the moment they sponsor a job, according to Indeed Data US. So join more than 3 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. Start hiring now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash locked on. Offer good for a limited time. Claim your $75 credit now at Indeed.com slash locked on. Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire. You need Indeed. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today. It's a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news, and they're streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So some more candidates uh, for this biggest disappointment for the Islanders. I also have to include J.G. Pajot on this list. And I think Pajot himself alluded to the fact that he was disappointed with his performance at getaway day. He played in uh, over the season. He played in all 82 games. Only scored 11 goals, had 33 points, was a minus eight plus minus. When you consider that Pajot regularly saw time on the second power play unit and essentially had one power play goal and one power play assist, you could see why this season was a disappointment. Now, Pajot... Did do well in the faceoff dot. He does kill penalties, although we know the Islanders' penalty kill was not just dead last in the league, but kind of in the top 10 all time for worst uh, penalty kill percentage. So clearly, you know, the fact that he's valuable as a penalty killer, good news. The fact that the penalty kill struggled so badly does not bode well for uh, J.G. Pajot. Clearly, the Islanders expected a little bit more from Pajot. I think he himself expected more. And that is why J.G. Pajot is, in my mind, one of the five finalists for biggest disappointment. Another player I would have to include on the list is Pierre Engvall. And again, I think Engvall played better in the playoffs, had some flashes, but Here's a guy, again, who started the season in the top six. You had Nelson, Engvall, and Palmieri being that dangerous combination that helped the Islanders last season to make the playoffs and, and was their most consistent line last year in the playoffs. And early in the season, Lane Lambert did not want to break that trio up, but it quickly became apparent that they did not have the same productivity and chemistry that they had a year ago. 
And Engvall played in 74 games, but only had 10 goals and 28 points. And again, Eng Engvall started the season in the top six, saw time on the second power play unit, had seven points, two goals, five assists on the power play. You have got to get, even from a third line player, you want better than 28 points in 74 games. Engvall, let's say, spent half the season on the second line, was on the second power play unit, and by the end of the season, he was a healthy scratch several times. So clearly, Patrick Waugh hoping for more from Engvall. Look, Engvall has size. He has speed. He is not, uh, to, to put it lightly, a very physical player. In uh, 74 games, he had 28 hits all season. And that's okay. Not everybody on the ice is going to be physical. But, you know, you can't be so not physical that anybody can knock you off the puck. And he uses his long reach to kind of compensate, and he uses his speed to get to loose pucks. But he's got to be a little more physical than he's been, and he's got to be more productive. The seven-year extension that Lou Lamorello signed Pierre Engball to, not looking very good. Now, it's only $3 million a year. That would be a bargain if Engvall turned into a top six forward, but there's no indication to me at this stage in his career that he has what it takes to consistently be a productive top six guy. He is a third or fourth line guy, depending on you know what you're looking for and, and the chemistry of your lines and your teams. But uh, again, to just come out with 10 goals and 28 points that was a disappointment in my mind for Pierre Engball. And I think the, the last candidate that I'm going to discuss, I think it has to be pretty obvious, and that is going to be Ilya Sorokin. And I'm not saying it was all the fault of Ilya Sorokin, but look at the numbers. Let's compare last year's Ilya Sorokin to this year's Ilya Sorokin. He went from 31 wins to 25. So that number was down. He started five fewer games. So that's part of it. His goals against average went from a 2.34 to a 3.01. That's three quarters of a goal per game, almost different. More than two thirds and less than three quarters. The save percentage went from a 9.24 a year ago to 908 this year. And here's the, the the stat that I think sort of says a lot. Despite having five fewer starts, he had almost as many saves. And the number of shots that that he faced played in six fewer games, five fewer starts, there was a difference of only 16 shots on goal faced. And that tells you that the Islanders did not play as well defensively in front of him as they did the previous season. The number of shots was higher per game. And when you think about it, if you add up the fact that at one point, Semyon Varlamov was injured and Ilya Sorokin was your goalie for 14 straight games and only was off for one period during that stretch. You're talking about a guy who probably was physically and mentally drained. And again, to his credit, Sorokin admitted on getaway day, he was not happy with the way he performed this season. And like, you know, very much like Mayfield, I don't fully blame Ilya Sorokin. Were there problems? Does he need to work on his angles a little bit better? He suddenly developed an issue, low glove side, like under his armpit glove side, which wasn't an issue before in the past. So I think all of those things, I think a lot of it had to do with the mental and physical fatigue that he was facing. But it is critical to the New York Islanders that Ilya Sorokin bounce back and return to form next season. 
And look, Semyon Varlamov did very well this year, but he's getting older. Father time, we know. Undefeated. You have an eight-year contract on Sorokin starting this coming season where all of a sudden the amount of money he's earning is going to go up from $4 million that he was earning this season to eight and a quarter million for the next eight years. You got to get your money's worth. So hopefully Sorokin will be able to bounce back and return to form. So my five candidates are Scott Mayfield, Anders Lee, J.G. Pajot, Pierre Engvall, and Ilya Sorokin for most disappointing player this year. Again, they're not in any particular order. So comment, uh, email, w- whatever works for you. Hit me up on Twitter and we will see what you think. Who do you think was the Islanders' most disappointing player this season? We have got more to get to after the draft lottery was held on Tuesday. We now know which pick the Islanders will have in this year's draft, whether they'll keep that pick is another thing. We've got that and our Islanders birthday of the day coming up on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by your friends at FanDuel. It's winner take all time in the NBA and NHL. and FanDuel's giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 to bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and more. Islander fans, use your knowledge of the NHL to bet on the Stanley Cup playoffs. You can bet on who's going to win the entire cup. You can bet on who will be the Conn Smythe Trophy winner. You can bet on any one of the series, the games, player props, you name it. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every playoff shot count. FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. So the draft lottery was held on Tuesday night, and the San Jose Sharks have the number one pick. Congratulations to them. The Islanders have had the number one pick four times. Uh, 1972, their first ever season, they took Billy Harris, who stayed with the team through the 79-80 season. Dennis Potvin, he's in the Hall of Fame. He was the first overall pick in 73. In 2000, Rick DiPietro, the first overall pick. He was an all-star before injuries uh, disrupted his career. And then in 2009, uh, John Tavares, uh, we know what happened to him, some all-star seasons. Not a Hall of Famer in my book, but a a, a solid performer during his tenure with the Islanders and now with the Maple Leafs. Uh, But the Islanders will have the 18th overall pick. Now, the Islanders have not kept a first round pick since 2019. Yeah, that's five years ago. So for the last four years, the Islanders have traded away picks. In return, they got J.G. Pajot, Kyle Palmieri, Alexander Romanov, and Bo Horvat, all players who have played a big role on the team. But the problem is, and uh, every day, as you know, we discussed this uh, yesterday on the show, that the Islanders' prospect pool is rated dead last or very close to it. Uh, in the NHL because Lou Lamorello has traded away prospects like Atu Ratu, picks like the four last four first round draft choices. And uh, also the team has not been doing a great job as an organization of giving young players a chance to learn by making mistakes and staying in the lineup. So these are all factors that have led to this situation. And I know Lou Lamorello, uh, you know, not personally, but I know Lou Lamorello and what he tends to do. 
And it would not surprise me at all if Lou Lamorello trades the Islanders' first round pick this season. Why? He doesn't have any prospects that other teams value enough that if he's going to make a trade for a player, he's going to be able to say, okay, you know, you, you take our top prospect and maybe a third round pick and voila, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get this good top six forward or puck moving defenseman in return. That is just not likely based on what the Islanders have to offer. And the veterans they have to offer in the trade market either have too much age, bad contracts, uh, all of these factors, uh, or no trade clauses, really. So you've got all of those factors limiting his options. So trading the first round pick, if Lou Lamorello believes in the core and is going to stay with this, you know, the core of this team and not even retool, but add a, a player or two to the mix, he is likely going to try to trade, let's put it that way, that 18th overall pick. I hope he does not do that. The, the longer he keeps trading away picks and prospects, the more difficult the retool or rebuild will become, the longer it will take, the lower the team will uh, fall. And the issue is, it's not that you don't have players that you can build around who are still young enough to build around. Horvat, uh, you know, you got Bo and Barzi and Noah Dobson and Ilya Sorokin. These are guys who are Alexander Romanov. These are guys who can be there for the foreseeable future and contribute. But you got to start acquiring picks and prospects to retool your organization to to increase accountability on this roster to have more competition for roster spots and for lineup spots and for you know who's going to be on the first line and to have options of guys who actually legitimately belong there so to me even if you want to try to improve the team and win now which i know lou has said he wants to do you've got to hold on to this pick and add picks and add prospects because the fall when these guys age out and there's nobody in the prospect pool to replace them is going to be painful and it's going to be difficult and uh, hopefully it doesn't come to that but to me you take the best player available or you could even try to trade down a little bit and get extra picks. Go from 18 to 22 or 23 if someone is willing to do it and add an extra second or third round pick if you could or an extra first round pick the following, whatever, or, or a young player. You know, go from 18 to 22 and add a mid-level prospect or a, even better if you can. So to me, that would be part of the approach this offseason whether Lou Lamorello will even entertain such a thing is a different story. It is time now for our Islanders' birthday of the day. And Wednesday was the 35th birthday of Islanders winger Matt Martin. The Windsor, Ontario native, 6'3", 215, a fifth-round pick of the Islanders back in 2008. And uh, made his debut in the NHL for the Isles in 2009-2010. Stayed with the Isles through 2015-2016. Played two years for the Maple Leafs when they were being run by, oh yeah, Lou Lamorello. And then rejoined the Islanders in 2018-2019 and has been with the team ever since. Matt Martin, a grinder, uh, a fourth line guy, sticks up for his teammates. 955 career NHL games, 81 goals, 176 points, 1,158 Penalty minutes, 88 playoff games, 8 goals, 13 points, and 147 penalty minutes. Uh, if he comes back next year, whether it's as an Islander or with another team, he needs 45 more games to reach the 1,000 games played mark, which is remarkable for any player, but even more remarkable for a guy who has spent his entire career or practically his entire career on the fourth line. One of his better games. As an Islander, we will take a look at June 19th, 2021, 
semifinals in the playoffs. Game four, Islanders trailing in the series two to one at the Nassau Veterans Memorial Coliseum against the Tampa Bay Lightning. It's Andre Vasilevsky against Semyon Varlamov. And with the Islanders up two to nothing, late in the second period, Matt Martin scores, makes it three nothing Islanders. Cal Clutterbuck and Adam Pellick with the assist. The Islanders then give up two goals in the third, but hold on to win this game three to two for Matt Martin. A goal, he had the game-winning goal. He played 10 minutes and 56 seconds. The Islanders evened this series at 2-2 two and two, and then uh, unfortunately lost it, as we all know, in seven games uh, with a one nothing loss in Game 7. And that is the closest the Islanders have been to getting back to the Stanley Cup Final since their last trip in 1984. I want to thank everybody who makes Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. Tomorrow on the show, uh, everydayers, we will be discussing some more postseason awards, uh, superlatives, and disappointments. So make sure you join us for that. Until then, have a great day, everybody. Stay safe. And of course, let's go Islanders.